3-2 is out. 3-2 is out from the major, the last CSGO major, by losing to Bad News Eagles, Fnatic and Vitality. Now, two of those, those three defeats came in a best of one, which is, you know, very kind of a subject that can be discussed, you know, but it's, a, it's not the topic of the video, it's just talking about the G2 and their failure to get at least into the playoffs and get, you know, into the chance to kind of win the last CSGO major, you know, especially I'm talking about Nico. Now, this is not even, at this point, it's not even embarrassing. It's just straight up disappointing. The, the, and there is no excuses. Obviously, changes need to be made as soon as possible, maybe after the season is over. But the thing is, like, it's not even, it's not even embarrassing. It's not about that. It's just there is no excuses for them simply because they skipped Rio in order to prepare better for the major. They had a decent challenger run and they end up going one and three in a, in a legend stage. And two out of three, two out of three of those defeats came against the, arguably the team that's worse than them. And you have to, you know, wonder what the hell happened and who the hell to blame for. And for me, it's quite obvious that that's something that I have been talking for the past. Well, it has a, it's been a year now, no, not a year, but like eight, nine months. Ever since that, ever since the, the moment Hooksy joined that team, I thought it was a mistake, and I still am gonna say it. I even when they were winning, I said it repeatedly. It doesn't really matter because, like, you know. The, 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 the events they won was pretty much uh, based on the super, super high individual performances by everyone, including them, JKS, Hunter, like all of them, you know, they delivered out so many 3v5s, 2v4s, 2v5s, all these like clutch pistols, all these like close maps, I remember that one against a couple of, of them like against FaZe on that nuke, 1614, and all these things based only and solely on the individual performance that was a high level as soon as they stopped as soon as that stopped a little bit and dropped off by a, by a small margin this is what happens like and then you have a player that's you know one of the best players to ever touch the game arguably one of the two players that could that can be considered as a goat Nico in the last two majors didn't even have a chance to get into the playoffs simply because a lack of leadership and bad choices they made as you know, bringing in Hooksy for that uh, IGL spot. The thing is, like in Rio, they didn't even qualify for it. You remember how that went. And they ended up, you know, sticking to that lineup, thinking, okay, we're going to try a little bit more. And they got that, you know, uh, sense of success when they won the Banana Cup in Blast. And the big event that it was, Katowice, when the teams played just poorly and they played out of their mind individually and decided to stick with this lineup and make a, make a gamble on, on Hooksy and just try another, they have another chance at the major. And it was an absolutely wrong decision. And it's just, uh, it's just a fact and you can't really say anything about it. It's 100%, well, not 100%, but it's mostly his fault. In not just, I'm not talking about the fragging, it's about decision-making, IGL and vetoing, like all these things that happened in the previous couple of days just contributed to all of this. And it's a shame for, for a personal friend of mine, obviously a long-term good friend of mine, one of the best actually, Nico, and one of the, the most highest, like the most popular and the best and highest rated players of all time to not have a chance to be in a major in, a, in his career and he has gone away to, for CS2 to make an, a significant result there and possibly win a major there, but it's just a, such a shame. And uh, if you examine all these games they played, it's just for me, like it makes no sense what happened in that fourth game against Fnatic whatsoever. Now, first of all, let's, let's, let's look at their results, you know, in the, in the, in the actual major. So, let me see if I can get this here. I had to like make this screen a little bit big because of the advertisement on the side, so don't don't hold that one against me. But you have okay, G2 played against there we go. Let's open this thing up. Actually I can't do that, so let's open it like this. So against Vitality, let's look at the veto and let's let's you know discuss it. I'm gonna make a video like going into depths about their game and everything like that, about every single game they played. But this is just like a, a recap and like a little bit going into the veto and discussing like what the hell happened there. So overpass and Anubis, 
straightforward bands for for G2. I guess they don't play overpass. They, you know, Anubis is the map they would like to avoid against Vitality. And then Vitality removed Ancient Inferno and Mirage, which is pretty understandable from their side. Ancient is their perma ban, Inferno is their is uh, G2's best map, and Mirage is the map that's Vitality weak on. And that left us with Vertigo and Nuke. G2 smartly removed Vertigo and went for Nuke, one of their best second best map after Inferno. And this is gonna come into play later on in this video. The thing is, like they went for Nuke. I think that was a smart decision going for Nuke against Vitality. They were the, the favorites on this in this matchup as well. They started off poorly. They started off 7-0. The, the the things like as, and as soon as I, I rewatched this game uh, this morning, as soon as they start playing defaults, as soon as they allow Nico to make a difference outside, as soon as they played a little bit more on the individual side rather than on some stupid uh, pre-called, I guess, on freeze time strats and all these things, you know, the things started to happen for them. They ended up, you know. 7-4, 7-5, they allowed that 1v4 uh, against Zaibu for the very last round, that was 10-5, and they managed to bring it back. From 13-7 to 13-13, there was like a, um, a series of rounds there, and they ended up on a 13-13 note, and then I believe they lost uh, uh, a round against Pistols. And that's something that was repeating in the following matches. Why I'm saying that, why is that important? Because that's something that happened against Bad News Eagles, and that's something that had happened against Fnatic on Vertigo. So there is some sort of a... Who, who do you blame there when that happens? Like, usually in matches you have, like, some team gets the leads, not that the other team adjusts, we get it back, then they, they get back into the game, and then the second team needs to call a timeout, their in-game leader, coach, need to readjust whatever is happening there, and bring the game to the end and close it out. Right, this is the difference between the good IGLs and like the you know the average IGLs or below average IGLs. Like you need to read the game, get the info from the previous rounds, include your coach, make a right decision, adjust to whatever it is they're doing, change the pace, switch up something, get up uh, like a like a pocket strat or anything what you want to do, like a, something that worked on on the practice that you actually practiced because you avoided some of the events and then apply that into the into the game and win the match. Nothing like that happened. 13-13, you know, they lost against Pistols, 14-13, 15, and then 16, and they lose the first match. After that, we had a bad news Eagles game. Let's see what happened in the veto there. And let's, review, uh, let's, let's talk about it there. So G2 removed Overpass, the Permaban, they removed Mirage, the best map of bad news Eagles. That's a smart thing to do, I guess. I have, nothing, I have nothing against it. Then Bad News Eagles removed Nuke, Anubis, and Inferno. So uh, expected veto from, uh, from uh, G2. And then this is the important part. G2 again in the second best of one removes Vertigo in, in favor of Ancient. Now that's again a smart call. I would do the same if I was in the position of whoever is making the veto calls there. Right, I would suggest the same and I would go for, for Ancient. And now they had a good D side. You know, they win the early economy fight in 2-2, two, 3-2, two, two, and then I remember the game because I watched it and I rewatched it this morning. The thing is like they got an early economy battle going on for them. They managed to get up to 10-5, which is super good on the T side of Ancient. And then that pistol happened. Obviously, Nico missed that shot, but it doesn't really matter at that point. You know, if, if he hit, obviously they would they would finish up that map, probably be going 1-1 going one, one, and then it would be a different story. But it didn't happen, but they still had a massive lead on that CT side. And then you can see things starting to crumble. You know, gun round after gun round. For example, there was a first gun round where they left A completely, started fighting for middle, and then Bad News Eagles rushed into the A side. Instead of saving, G2 went for a retake, they all died, and you know... Um, I think maybe they saved one or two guns and just it was just a, a bad call at that moment you just need to go back and just make sure that you play for the money because the economy can be exploited in this version of CS they didn't do that that makes you wonder what the hell did they practice who is making those calls why are we not saving when we lost the side completely we want to go for these crazy retakes when our individual form is not on the level it's just unwise decisions making on that and now it happened that they went to 10-10 and it was like 12-12 
and they ended up losing a 5e3 there or 5e4 I think when the JKS was alone deep on a site and then you know they had like a couple of lurks and lurks and then four people died immediately so again in a 12-12 there is a bad mid-round call there is a bad push there is a bad decision that end that cost you the game overall we ended up 16-13 once again 0-2 now we go into the third ma third matchup against the uh, now like I said I'm gonna go into depth with this like the situations and rounds this is not about that this is something about this is about like G2 and just a recap of why and it, it's just such a fucking shame that you know that that team is not gonna be in the playoffs and Nico will not have a chance to get into the uh, you know uh, left status of a major champion like you know it's just uh, it, it kills me. But it is what it is, it's over. Anyway, now the third matchup against Fury went really well overall. I see, I, you know, G2 played alright and Fury played terrible CS throughout the whole event. And I think they deserve to be 0-3. And, three. and I, I'm kind of surprised that I kind of missed that myself. That they're not going to be, I even had them going into top 8, which was a massive, you know, mistake by me. But the thing is, like, uh, let's go into the veto. G2 removed overpass again, permaban. Fury removed Nuke, which is, you know, for them, super smart. Removing the second best map of uh, of um, G2. I'm surprised they didn't go for, for Inferno, but I guess they believe that Inferno can be okay against uh, G2. Obviously, G2 picked their best map, which is Inferno. Fury went for Mirage. And then, again, third time in a row, three out of three times, in the second stage of Vito's, Fury removes oh, Anubis, and G2 removes... Vertigo, leaving Ancient on as a decider. Now, he didn't come to that you know, decider because G2 won 2 pretty convincingly, 11-4 for the T sides and the CT side of Mirage. So both first half went in the double digits for G2. They dominated the whole game. They played well and, you know, they won that map. So, again, on the second stage of the veto, it happens that they remove Vertigo, which is their second worst map or maybe even the worst map for them right now and they go like you know and they, and they decide to go with ancient which they lost you know so they are not really concerned about that one they leave it open against furia so the thing is like we have the the following match and the most idiotic veto that i have seen in a while is just this game against fanatic now we need to mention that g2 didn't even play well in that first map that their own best map which is inferno and they managed to win and get themselves to the third map somehow because Ancient was terrible. But let's go into the veto of this game. Uh, they go with, uh, they remove Overpass. Now against Fnatic, they had all the advantages on the fucking planet to manipulate the veto any way they fucking want. And they decided to choose the one thing that's gonna hurt them. Now this is absolutely on the IGL or whoever made that call absolutely 100% on them and I'm gonna tell you why uh, now the thing is uh, first of all G2 removed overpass right that's the better worst map Fnatic removed Mirage which is you know okay that's expected G2 picked Inferno their own best map one of the worst maps for Fnatic super expected I think Fnatic knew it G2 knew it everybody knew it on the fucking planet and it was a right decision to make right and then there was a little bit of a curveball from Fnatic I think G2 expected them to pick Vertigo. I think even Nico said it in the interview or something. Somebody said it in the interview. So the thing is like, they expected, you know, Fnatic to pick Vertigo and Fnatic picked Ancient, which was a gift, straight up gift for G2, because, you know, everybody on the planet expected, you know, Fnatic who is good on Vertigo to pick Vertigo because they don't have many options because their best map is a perma ban of G2. And what happens in the second stage of the veto is mind-blowing and it's like you can't make this shit up. It's like somebody wanted them to lose. Like that's how I feel. And where is Nikos to step up and be the voice of reason when this decision has been, you know, made incorrectly to say just listen, we can't allow this to happen in a 1v2 in a 1-2 uh, game for the elimination. So it, it's just mind-blowing. Anyway. The second stage, uh, uh, Fnatic removes Anubis, which is another, you know, kind of semi-expected thing from them. And that leaves Vertigo and Nuke. Now remember, 
Remember, first of all, G2's nuke has been one of the best in the past six months. They had that tremendous streak of what, 16, 17 nukes that was interrupted by Fnatic in that stupid game, which was like a one-off, 100%. And I can, I rewatched that game too. It's just a bullshit game. G2 was right to pick that map. And, you know, even if they left it here, it would be the right call. Now they decided to not pick, not decide to leave on the decide, nuke on as a decider, but Vertigo, which is their worst map and a good map for Fnatic. And they expected Fnatic to pick that map in the first stage. But they decided, once they didn't get it, they decided to leave it for them in the whole best of three. To have, so Fnatic got two out of three maps they wanted. I am 100% sure that Fnatic knew or expected that G2 is going to remove Vertigo in the second stage if they pick Ancient and what happened was G2 decided not to trust their nuke not to trust their you know second best map after all these weeks of preparation and boot camps and all these things they didn't you know go for these events and they decided to go for Vertigo and what happened there G2 won Inferno Fnatic one nation and we ended up on Vertigo. Now, in what sense, in what universe, in what uh, state of mind you need to be to not understand that Nico's worst map, your best player, arguably the best player of all time, his worst map is Vertigo. He doesn't have space to work on Vertigo. He doesn't have opportunities. Your map overall is bad. You have a bad streak on it. You don't you know, work well on that map. It has been a weakness for you for past God knows how long. And you have been vetoing it throughout this whole event. And you leave it as a decider in a 1v2. Nico, for example, you don't understand the fact that he has the best impact outside on Yard, on Nuke, and there is not a player or a play on Nuke from Fnatic that can stop Nico and contain him outside. On both sides, CT and T, he is delivering so much space, so much ground, so much impact compared to Vertigo where he absolutely can do anything. And on top of that, that's a shit map for you. Now you have Nico on the outside delivering so much impact. So the only reaction from Fnatic there would be to make a setup, to overload the art, to do all these things. And then what happens then? That free space, frees up space for Hunter, for JKS, for Monesi, who has been also super good on Nuke. The person who can go ramp, who can go outside, who can go aggressive, who can go defensive. We saw him being leather, we saw him being inside, pushing hut, pushing door. All these opportunities that you have for your second best player there. And on top of the fact you have JKS who has been playing super good event, who is known for playing good nuke. You decide to cancel all of that shit and go for Vertigo, which is your absolutely worst map. And you personally are responsible for this and if people don't see that i don't know what to tell you anymore this is just straight bad veto and bad decision by the whoever made that call now i don't want to put the the blame on the young coach swanny because he is like i said i even talked to him a little bit after the game he is a super young kid in the in this head uh, head coach role uh, the pressure is too high for him. Is like uh, even if he made that mistake, I can understand it to some point. But there are people who can be helping in those type of decision and being the voice of reason when the people who is responsible that responsible for that are making mistakes. Because all they talk is that we are a unit, we are a team, we are this and that. And where is this 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 supportive, you know, secondary voice that's gonna be a voice of reason to decide in those things? So you have. Like I said, third map, a decider, you choose Vertigo over Nuke. A Nuke that has been historically in the last six maps the best map and you have been the best team in the world on that map. And you skip the event to go, to not go to Rio and to actually practice. And then you end up doing this in a 1-2 game against a team that's on paper weaker than you by a large margin. 
you allow them to have two of their best maps or three of the two out of three of their best maps in this best of three you deny them overpass because you could and that was a that was a gift right there and then you allow them to have ancient and vertical and then you end up losing and you wonder why now the, the way they lost they had a terrible t side i think it was nine six they started off poorly again it was like here and there and they ended up 12 6 and they started to come back and now they managed to get to 12 12. now dumbass people are gonna say yeah they were doing close yeah it was a couple of rounds it's not bad it's a it's a thing that repeated multiple times in this event 12 6 down they get to 12 12 the team readjusts and you do not do the same you just end up running the same things thinking that it's gonna be magically getting you to the victory, right? From 12-12, they lost every single round. 12-30, yeah. yeah, it was 12-13 or something. But at some point it was 12-12 and they lost three rounds after that. There was no, not the change of, so, so there was not a switch up in their game. There was not like a, like a preset play, some sort of a specialty play, anything like very, you know, coordinated. There wasn't like a particular timeout that can, you know, have a have an impact on on, on these kind of big high pressure rounds and then you end up going one and three and then i have nico who is supposed to be and who is one of the best players that ever touched the game not even have a chance to win the major after the previous major which they even qualify and they decided to keep hooksy just because they won a banana cup at katowice and after that he used to yell are you watching kasad kasad are you watching and i'm watching now brother I am watching now. The right thing to do right now for him is to step off that role. Right now. It's just so many mistakes, so many things when it comes to this mental game, when it comes to this like decision making and all these things that happen in the vetoes. And Nico was right. The way they played, they didn't deserve to be there. And it, partially it was his fault to not step in and make this decision himself. That is it. That is simply it. I'm gonna make a video about like going into depth into these games, but um, I'm just tilted as fuck. The thing is like I was tilted since yesterday. I was tilted ever since I saw that Yug ban and going for Vertigo. And it's just, I was praying to God that this map goes to 2-0. And it was it nearly went to zero in favor of Fnatic, but it you know G2 managed to win and Vertigo was just never meant to be for them and historically has been the worst map for them. But the the Giga Chat decided to go for that because whatever the reason is, and then he ended up costing G2 an opportunity to get into the playoffs and win the major. The funny thing, the saddest thing, if they managed to get to the main, the, the playoffs, they would probably be number one favorite to win the whole thing. Now it's time for change. It's time for change, uh, a deep change in that team. I do believe that he, this has to be it. And I do believe that there is no more bullshit like uh, giving it another chance, giving it another run, giving it another bullshit thing. Like it's just for me, it's so bad and obviously you know i have to mention my other friend there hunter he didn't really perform like to the best I, like he could but you cannot really expect him or jks or monacy to be on his to that top level right now it's just um every time not right now but every single time the, the, the thing that disappoints me from them is the fact that they skipped rio and then underperformed rear just because it just for me it's just uh I don't know. It's a very tilting and it's uh, it's a shame. That's all. See ya. By the way, guys, OneXBet is an official partner of the channel and this, you know, this content that I'm making and if you go there and register, just make sure you use code 1xcasad or casad 1x to get up to up to 130 euro bonus directly from me and uh, yeah, give it a give it a look.